Welcome back, everybody. Mate talk time. Excited to be before you. Just be careful. Bandages off. Feeling better. I just need to say <laughs> that last week. Oh, excuse me. Ooh, there's something about to happen there. Uh, last week I was in a lot of pain. I was in a lot of pain. Um, I had had the operation the day before. I was still within my 24 hours of the and you know because I was anesthetics, anesthesia. Um, you know what it is. Uh, so I was still a bit like, and this was very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. Um, turns out, I thought it was, I don't know why, but I thought it was pinhole surgery. I'm telling you, yeah, it's just a pinhole surgery. No, when they took off the bandage, seven stitches, baby. I'm like, what? So yeah, so unless they had like a really big camera that they were just like putting through, anyway. Uh, so, but feeling a lot better, thank you very much. I wanna thank those people who, um, they, you guys sent out a lot of love and I do appreciate it. Um, a lot of well-wishing, get better, all that sort of stuff. First two days was trash. After that, slowly getting better. Now, other than yesterday when I bumped it and I'm, I, I was ready to, to turn into the Hulk because I was so, upset. you know, because you think to yourself, I don't know if I split open the, uh, <laughs> the bandage, the, uh, the cut. Um, but I'm okay, I'm feeling a lot better. And uh, so therefore, in good mental state to be able to do this Mate talk, so no sympathy today. If I make a mistake, it's because, well, because I'm no good, that's why. I hope you have an awesome drink. Mine is my mate, I'm trying out a new mate, a, yerba, a new yerba mate. Actually, I'll put it here, what, what it is. It's actually, I think from Uruguay. They like to have their, a lot more powdery like. I'm not a fan, Argentinians do like to have el palito con palo. Uh, they, we'd like to have our sort of more chunky looking, but it, the flavor is really nice. So. I don't mind. All right, one more sip and then we'll get cracking. I'm hoping everybody is well and I'm hoping that, yeah, that everybody's good. All right, um, so last week I mentioned that we're gonna do a raffle this week. We had a number of members come through. Fantastic, and I thank you for joining and becoming a member of the channel. It's awesome, it's just, um, the, the bottom line is it's awesome to be connected in this way. Um, now, I asked the question, do I do a winner takes all three of these for one person or do I split them up? Now, I've got a number of beautiful people who are my conciliaries of the channel. One of them is my own brother, so my, my actual blood brother, and he said to me, he instantly sent me a message and he said, Mars, share the love, baby. So I'm gonna share the love. Sam, another one that said, you know, it would be nice, we've got a lot of members, 42, that's pretty awesome. Um, so we're gonna share the love. I'm gonna do three rolls, three spins on the wheel. And what the way that I'd like to suggest we do it is, first person that wins, you have choice of either one of the three. So the three are, so just to remind you guys, Ex Nilo, Gold, Immortals, the Extrait, which is just rock star. For me, this is an incredible fragrance. I'm big love for it. Then the other one is Red Colorado by M. McAuliffe. This is a very, has a blend between being aromatic and woody, but at the same time being, it would be perfect for winter, but also a really good fragrance for spring, not for summer, I don't think, but more spring, autumn also, or fall, a gorgeous. And then this one, a glorious um, summer fragrance called Between Two Trees. It does have mate in the heart. Floraiku, incredible fragrance. All of these are large, like 10, 15, 12 mils, something like that. So nice travel size. Here we go, I'm gonna start recording this. Give me one second. So the, oh, no, hang on, wrong one. Boom, there it is, okay. All right, three, two, one. So have a look at these beautiful people. And, and actually really, it's, it's impressive to see the, the, uh, the amount of members that have come on board. So I thank you all. Appreciate it, here we go. Good luck. Three spins, first winner. Harold, Roberto, as they would say in Italy. Harold, congratulations, you have won first choice. Any of those three, let me know which one you'd prefer. Send me a message via uh, Instagram and we'll get that happening. Second spin, good luck. Now while that's spinning, to be a member, it's $4, $4 a month, jump on in, become a member, helps uh, support the channel, plus I get to do these fun things where I'm giving away prizes. Good luck. Mm. 
Naomi. Naomi, congratulations. Oh, and because it's a free app, ooh. <laughs> we gotta sit through this, hang on. Skip video, can we skip the video? All right, here we go. <laughs> Naomi, you won. It's a free app. I'm not paying for it. Um, here we go, it's a free app, I'm allowed to use it. All right, here we go, next one. Last one. Good luck, last person, here we go. Congratulations to all three, Mark, um, Naomi, and Harold, Roberto. Congratulations to all three of you. Send me a DM. If you're not connected to me via Instagram, here's the handle. And uh, let me know the address, let me know what you would like. As I mentioned, first person, tell me which one, and then everybody else just say one, two, and three, and then whatever's left over, boom, I'll send that through. Let me move on. So I mentioned last week about the uh, the fragrance tour. I sort of broke down what we did in the last tour. We've announced that we are doing a new fragrance tour in May 2024. We are creating a thing called the hot list. So if you haven't put your name on the hot list, and, and I'll explain why you want to do this. Uh, if you haven't put your name on the hot list, jump on the NFC website. You'll be able to so if you scroll down, you'll see that there's a, uh, an opportunity to put your email there. Everybody on the hot list will get a, a, um, a, the first, uh, I guess, communication on this and a chance to uh, jump on board with this, with this um, tour that we're doing. Now, I want to announce that so we've been doing a lot of work. So Kevin and I, um, as I mentioned last week, the Fragrance Tour 2023, great success. It was our first go at it. We, you know, we're sort of testing the water, see if this could work. Could we actually, you know, take everybody through? Uh, would it be an, an awesome experience for those who did participate? I'm happy to say that, you know, that for us, we were super excited. And also our guests that joined us also had an incredible experience. So we're rebooting the whole thing. We want to have no more than 12 people. We feel that 12 is a nice number for us to work. The cost is 15,000 and that cost includes, um, so getting to France and uh, out of France, we're not covering the cost of that. The 15,000 will cover accommodation, food, um, transport when you're with us, so as we move around. Um, and then the, I guess, to do all these special experiences, there, there is a little bit of a, well, there is a cost associated to them. Um, and so it's us uh, covering all, that, that, um, all the costs on that. Now, just to let you know, the food, we dined previously in Michelin-starred restaurants. So the, our final farewell dinner was in a Michelin-star restaurant. Um, so we are eating very comfortably. Um, the accommodation is four star, four star plus. Uh, the hotel we stayed in, Grasse, which was Royal Moujon. Um, just incredible property. So just know that, yes, it is a luxury tour, hence why it has that price tag but know that we are making sure that everybody's, well, that, it, that it's a luxury tour, that we want to, this to be a, a really exciting experience. All right, so we've been working behind the scenes and I want to announce today and the motivation to put your name on the hot list because I've been mentioning that we've been doing some things and the first person or the first big brand that we'd like to announce is Pierre Guillaume. What we're going to do is go to Pierre's hometown, essentially, where his manufacturing, where he is, in Clément Ferrand, and we will experience the fragrances alongside him. This is going to be a very unique experience, and I'll go one more. When I first met with Pierre, um, he mentioned to me that um, that he was reluctant to engage with. Um, this, the influencer and the influencer model. I, I, I put him at ease quickly and I said, look, I'm not an influencer, so we're all good. <laughs> um, I'm a content creator. I'm more about discovering and unboxing the, the artistry with perfumery. And that's, excuse me, I've got this itchy nose from the powder. Um, that's really where I want to live in the sense that I, I, I'm very much in love with the artistry of perfumery and unboxing that. Um, we, we kicked off. We actually uh, developed a, a good friendship. He invited me to, on this trip, 
to Clément Ferrand and I had a chance to experience his uh, manufacturing and experience the behind the scenes. There is a video that we're creating right now that, that should come out in the next couple of weeks. Um, wait till you see that because the area that, that uh, well, this Clément Ferrand area is a, well, it's UNICECO protected. I think that's the UNICECO, is that? Yep. Um, if, if you know, for those who are familiar with the Volvic uh, bottle, the Volvic water, that mountain range, that's actually that area. That's where the water actually comes from. So this whole area is just, it's about nature. It's about, you know, being, it's in the heart of, of, uh, of France itself. Um, so anyway, the bottom line is that Pierre has accepted or has um, agreed to join to uh, to be part of the tour. Um, for us, this is a big deal. This is something that he doesn't do what he doesn't do, uh, and so for us to be a part of this is going to be pretty exciting. So, for those who are interested in doing something that is really actually, I'll go one more. Pierre was, and I, I'm gonna, and I'll, I'll, I've done some productions on the brand, but I'm gonna do a few more just so people can understand uh, how. One, how in incredible the range that Pierre carries. And two, for me, he is one of the early, he is the, the pioneers in this niche field. So he first released in 2010. Uh, so even before niche perfumery was anything, not even a whisper, Pierre was already in the space. So he is one of the, the, the I guess, the, the early founders of all things niche perfumery. When you see his collection, when you see his, the artistry behind, the work that he does is just like boom next level anyway but video will come out on that we'll go into more detail but just to let everybody know france 2024 pierre guillaume is part of that tour we will be going to visit him so if you are interested in knowing more about this put your name on the hot list you will get a special offer we're only having 12 as our limit so we yeah so if when we send out this invite if the people on the hot list if we get to 12, then we'll just, we'll close it off essentially. And, and then we'll just work with those people who have booked in. Boom, boom, boom. There it is. All right. So let me, um, let me have a small drink. 12 minutes. All right. I don't want this to be a long mate talk today. I, um, I want to keep it moving, but I do want to talk about Suspiro. Now, last week I had one of the, um, the subscribers who raised the question that was actually um, Rodrigo from Port Portugal. Portugal, Portugal, um, mentioned that that uh, Suspiro was a brand that he wasn't really familiar with. So, let me tell you a story. The first small drink. Can you tell I'm thinking? I'm sort of like, okay, am I saying all the things I gotta say? Yes, I am. The reason why I, I bring up Suspiro is I mentioned last week that uh, Suspiro releasing three new fragrances. Sorry, my hands. I think I've been a little bit too <laughs> aggressive just now. And my hands like, yo, yo, I'm still sore. Um, three new fragrances. I've been testing all three of them. Oh my gosh, guys, honestly. I mean, I know that, anyway, maybe I'm just a sucker for these kind of fragrances or this style of, of perfumery. Uh, but yeah, if when, when these guys get released, you need to check them out. Really, really impressive. Um, big recommendation. So what I want to do today is let's talk about Suspiro, but before I do that, let me take you on a little bit of a journey. When I first came into niche perfumery, I fell in love with the Panhaligans brand. And I, it was, you know, from a, from a uh, branding sort of point of view, there are these beautiful bow ties on it, the history behind the brand being that they were, um, established in England in 17, I'll put it here. Uh, so, you know, beautiful heritage, all that sort of stuff. And this is the first fragrance that really popped for me, Alfetti. The story behind Alfetti is that it's a uh, village in Turkey. There's a rose, a black rose that blooms in that time. And, you know, there's a great sort of story behind it. If you want to know more, I did, I did do a review on this, so you can have a look at that. Now, this became my first love. And the other thing about it too, that I, I, I loved it because of its scent. And 
this is early on where I came in into niche. And the first question that most people ask when they come in from designers into niche is, what's male, what's female? Um, and then I didn't realize that I had, you know, I, I even like, what? Um, I bought a female fragrance, supposedly. So Penhaligon's, I don't know if they still designate it as a female fragrance, but when I bought it, um, it was designated as a female fragrance um, because it has all these florals in there, in particular, the, the rose. For me, I, I, I just thought, I felt, I mean, as an early niche adopter, when I, when I first came in, this was back in 2017 or something, I thought, you know, what am I doing? Am I, am I buying a woman's perfume? Is that, is that, is this weird or is this normal? I then realized there's no such thing as male, female, or the, the, sorry, in perfumery, smell the smell. I always love saying what uh, Luca Maffei once said, I had a chance to meet with him and he said, it's like pasta. Which pasta is for men, and which pasta is for women? It's pasta. It's just, you know, if you like bow ties, you eat bow ties. If you like more, um, you know, fettuccine, then go for that. Now, as I start to unbox it, so I, so I fell in love with this, then I fell in love with how fitty leather, and that one, so how fitty leather tends to have a little bit more masculine lean to it with the leather notes and everything else. I discovered that the perfumer for this is a gentleman by the name of Christian Provenzano. And I realized that actually I like the way that Christian constructs fragrances because I came across certain Bodicea the Victorious fragrances and I'm like, whoa, the ones that would ping for me, I'm like, whoa, this is great, this is great. I discovered that Christian Provenzano was behind those particular fragrances. A very good friend of, uh, of myself and Kevin, Mr. Lee, homie, local, who's an incredible uh, an enthusiast when it comes to all things perfumery. If you're not, check out his account. He's a super awesome guy. He actually, I don't know how he does it. He's able to connect himself with just some just big names and people. Uh, I think it's his very uh, casual nature that he has. He's just a, you know, who, who, who you see is who Lee is, and which is, which is an, an awesome thing. So uh, Lee once said to me, he was at the airport and he saw Christian Provenzano and he said, can I get a selfie with you? And, he, and Christian said, of course. And I, and I was like, nah, I don't think that happened, mate. Um, and then he showed me the photo. <laughs> and there's him and Christian smiling. Now, Lee coined this a while back, and that is that Christian Provenzano is a rock star or the rock star perfumer. Since then, both myself and Kevin, whenever we're talking about any fragrances that Christian creates, we always say, the rock star perfumer, Christian Provenzano, blah -dee -da, -dee da So, in 2022, in companionship with Suspiro, the owner of Suspiro, the gentleman's name is Salas, they released, they released to the market the full Suspiro range. Now, here's an interesting point. Oh, sorry, they released to the market the full Suspiro range, all perfumed by Christian Provenzano. So, all these um, the Suspiros in that collection, I'm gonna say all, I'm pretty certain all, someone correct me, are all perfumed by Christian Provenzano. So these are rock star perfumer fragrances that have a very clear DNA. That DNA is, it is about opulence, it is about projection, it's about beautiful sillage, it is about, and you know the thing, and, and this is what was very true back here with Halfetti, is that this is a, this, these are, it's a complex composition. For me, Halfetti has so many different facets to it. I can smell it and I'm saying, it, I smell this. Other people smell and they're like, whoa, it smells like that. Hence why, to say that it's a feminine fe of, or female fragrance, pff, no. This is an incredible, if you haven't experienced Halfetti, one of the earlier ones from Christian, you need to check it out. But let me go back to, to, um, to Suspiro. So what I want to do today is, for those who are not familiar with the Suspiro range, know that these are, okay, so stop it, my, my brain's like, okay, so Suspiro has been around for a while, and you will know them to a degree via Zerjoff. So Zerjoff have what they call the Velvet range, things like Accento or uh, Opera, um, Erba Pura. So these are originally, Suspiro products. So these were originally Suspiro 
um, fragrances, essentially. Um, complicated story, I'm not gonna go into it, but then, it's similar to Kemi right now, so if you've seen, uh, there was a brand called Kemi, um, and actually same with Casa Morati, um, Zurichoff has now incorporated that into their catalog of products. So the same thing happened with the Velvet range and the Suspiro fragrances. So they have fallen into the, the Zurichoff umbrella. However, 2022, Salas, the owner of, the, of Suspiro, decided to come out with his, or relaunch his own brand. And Christian Provenzano, as I mentioned, is the perfumer for these. 28 minutes, long, long story, my, my battery's about to die, so I'm gonna come back to it. Is it 28 minutes or is it 20 minutes? Hang on, about to click in a minute. I'm gonna keep going until this thing stops on me. Hang on, wait, one more minute, boom. No, 20 minutes, oh, we're good. Um, so what I wanna do today is, for those who are not familiar with the Suspiro range or don't know where to start, let me give you four fragrances that for me are just exceptional and I think you should begin your journey here. Number one is Vibrato. Vibrato, caden. Giving away the other ones. So the first one is Vibrato. Vibrato is, okay, so again, these, this is a, a just easy unisex fragrance. Um, within my family, I wear it all the time. Um, my son's girlfriend loves to wear this. Now, the two of us, we, we share stories on how we are always getting complimented, not together, but when we're, you know, separate parts, um, because we're wearing this fragrance. Many times, I've been in meetings, I've actually met people, I've gone to parties, um, the, just in general, and people have, have stopped me. I was in mid-conversation with a group of people, and the person next to me just said, I don't know what, is that you? Because something smells incredible, vibrato. Actually, my, um, my son's girlfriend um, did the same thing, that at work, uh, she walks in and, and they're like, what are you wearing? So again, projection, the sillage, all that longevity on this fragrance is just something, something else. So if you're brand new to Suspiro, this is the one that I would strongly recommend that you go hunt down. Vibrato, winner for everybody. What it is. Now this is Christian Provenzano, rockstar perfumer, so you can't, in my opinion, go, oh yeah, I can really detect this one more than that, except one, I'll talk about that in a minute. But most of them are just beautifully, just gorgeous compositions. They're just, they're so elaborate, they're so, um, they're, they're so they evolve so beautifully, they, they're different facets to them. But if I can just put it quickly into a category so you understand, this is a citrus floral fragrance with a woody base. Those components never lose. So you, that citrus on the opening, and interestingly though, sometimes you say a citrus fragrance and you can really detect the mandarin note or the grapefruit note or whatever it may be. Whereas here, you're just getting a, a sweet citrus-like component to it, already with some florals around it. It does go down into a woody sort of powdery place, but it is just, again, so for, as a fragrance that is spectacular and has ticks all the boxes when it comes to longevity, et cetera, et cetera, I would recommend to you Vibrato. I'm gonna do a, a more detail. I'm gonna actually break down all these fragrances, all the, um, the, the Suspiros that I have in more detail, but off the cuff, I'd strongly recommend that to you. Long process to say before that fragrances are unisex, all right? But we also recognize that some fragrances tend to be either heightened in florals, which we interpret as more female leaning, or more heightened in leathery notes or really heavy woods, which we tend to um, allocate as more masculine leading. So this one here is a more masculine leading fragrance. It's called Erba Leather. So think Erba Pura, where it has the very sparkling fruit-like basket, all these different components, mango or a pineapple and, or a plum and nectarine, all these sort of different notes coming through. It's similar in that way, in that it is a very sparkling, fruity opening. Um, I think it's more through passion fruit and some citrus components into that. However, it does go down into a very robust, very potent, powerful leather fragrance. Unlike some leather fragrances that almost lean across to like a gasoline, or very heavy wood or animalic or things of that nature, to me, to my nose, this is not overtly in that place. However, if 
you don't like leather, don't go here. <laughs> because, uh, let's take my wife. Let me slow down. Let me take another drink. My wife is not a huge leather fan. So me and leather, if I'm, if I'm gonna wear a punchy leather fragrance, I know that I, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I'll, I'll be out somewhere and not necessarily crossing path too often with my wife, Sandra. I purposely wore it the other day because I knew I was gonna talk about it today. And Sandra on like first spray, I was in the bathroom, she was, you know, deeper in the house. And she's like, way, there we go, leather boy. <laughs> So she detected this instantly. She told me, because I mentioned to her that I was going to talk about this today. She mentioned to me last night that she could still smell edible leather in the bathroom the next day. She jumped into my car. She said that she could smell it in the car. This is now 20, more than 24 hours later. She's like, I don't know. I almost felt like you sprayed it on the seatbelt because it was just everywhere. So as a leather potent fragrance, it definitely has it, but it's not to the same extent as a Cuyum by um, Orto Barisi or something like that, where that is so animalic and almost visceral in it's just like, grrr. This one here, because of those early fruit notes that are there, that the, the, the more livelier notes at the start, for me, for me, gives it a lot more balance. I think this fragrance is gorgeous. I mean, I love wearing it. The other one, that, the other person that loves this fragrance is my son. So he wears this as he's going out fragrance. He went to a party recently, he mentioned, and this is the one he chose. He says that to start, he actually, funny, he says that at the start, he doesn't like the fruit notes. He says that they're a little bit, you know, it's a bit too fruity for him, but he loves the, as it begins to dry down and then full, the full dry down. He says he just feels, he just feels right. And when it comes to its presence, projection and, and, and sillage, in an open space, which is where he was, he was an outdoor party, this baby is a rock star. Created by a rock star perfumer. So those who like more leathery fragrances, but not so potent, but not like slap you in the face with animalics, I'd recommend to you Edible Leather. I think it's gorgeous and I think it's a rock star fragrance. The next one that I would like to put forward to you is Cadenza. Now Cadenza, again, so we're saying fragrances are for everybody. To my nose, I do wear Cadenza, but I, it's, not a, it's not one that I reach for easily or quickly because to my nose, I think it, the floral is a little bit more heightened and it does have more of that white floral component. The truth is my wife, Sandra, loves, I call her the white floral queen. She loves all things white floral, whether it be jasmine, whether it be um, orange blossoms, what else, um, gardenia, um, uh, magnolia maybe. But anyway, all, the Lily of the Valley, all that sort of stuff, she just loves that. And so for me, this, because that's, this is where this falls. It, it does start off with a beautiful, again, citrus, but more accented with jasmine, Lily of the Valley, and things of that nature. As a floral fragrance uh, for those who like. So it's not heightened in floral. There are some like La Chasse au Papillon, which is an incredible, um, white floral fragrance, but that is very distinctly white floral. It has a very clear white floral sort of um, a note that runs through it. Whereas here, it does dry down a bit more into a woody place, but it doesn't ever go away from that white floral component. Not as heightened, not as indolic. Um, so, so what I'm saying is a man can wear it. So I, like I said, I do wear it, but it's not one that I reach for easily. As on a woman, forget about it. This works, Sandra loves wearing it. My, again, my, um, my son's girlfriend, I was about to call her wife, no. My son's girlfriend, she loves wearing Cadenza. So another great big hitter when it comes to a more female sort of skewed fragrance. Boom, all right, one more drink. How am I doing? 29 minutes, this is gonna end soon, surely. This is gonna pop. Boom, back. I knew it was gonna end, so, but I mean, we're, we're back. All right, so, the one that I'm wearing today, pasticcio. I've talked about this before. This is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. For me, this is a hidden gem. I've, I've noticed that uh, so if I look online, I hear vibrato, that's one that always gets hit, the um, herbal leather, cadenza, etc. But pasticcio, nobody talks about it. Pasticcio means mess. 
And if you look at, so jump on for a grand ticket, have a look at the amount of floral notes that are in here. It's, you, you're thinking, it, you're thinking what is going on here? What is Christian Provenzano creating here? Well, let me tell you, he's creating a masterpiece. This fragrance, um, I'm almost feeling like, you know, vibrato gets a lot of love and a lot of attention, but pasticcio is for me just like something else. I wear this fragrance, um, it just feels good. It feels good. Even though, and interestingly, again, Cadenza has florals, but I feel like it's a little bit more female leaning. And I think again, because of the white florals, pasticcio has so many florals in there, but yet it is glorious. It is pure magic. This fragrance, I need you guys to go check it out. For me, there's a huge love on this particular fragrance. So there are the four gorgeous fragrances that I would recommend to you within the Suspira range. Now I do want to point out, and I'm going to do, so I'm going to go into a, a more of a breakdown. I will give, you know, the, I like doing the wheel. Um, I feel that uh, the, the Suspiros, uh, something, well, watch this space. I really feel that Suspiro, some exciting things are going to come out with these guys. So as more people start to realize just the, the, the beauty of this brand. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'll create a, um, a much more in-depth review on these guys because I think there's something pretty exciting happening with them. Um, also, yeah, anyway, ba 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 ba. That's because I was gonna say I had a chance to meet them in Cannes and heard some other stuff, and so I don't want to go into detail. But I will go into this detail. I mentioned about the owner of the business. His name is Salas, and I want to show off this bottle here. Look how gorgeous this thing is. So this is Salas Brands. It's it's called Salas. And this is called <laughs> Crepusculo Cintilante, which basically means sparkling dusk. And the idea of it is that, I mean, firstly, it's, it's an art piece. So this is more of a bougie fragrance piece, apart from the actual juice itself, which is ultra bougie. Um, this has this beautiful um, piece here, which it's, it's an art piece, essentially. So the idea... The idea is that, you know, you put that as a talking point visually. Now this fragrance here, Crepusculo Scintillante, is just a glorious, uh, spicy oriental style fragrance. It has things like nutmeg, saffron. Um, it does, it is very warm, it's very ambery. For those in the Northern Hemisphere going into winter and cooler months, baby this is incredible i've had this well i went through my winter with this particular fragrance um i actually i discovered the brand when i was in excellence um in march this fragrance is exceptional so salas I, I am i want to explore this brand a bit more there's there's a number of beautiful fragrances again by the rockstar perfumer mr christian provenzano so you can see that christian is really um, sort of working in partnership with uh, Suspiro, with Salas. Um, and so there's something exciting happening here. Let me just say one last thing. So Christian was saying to me that uh, we, we had a chance to, so here's a photo. Um, so I had a chance to not only meet him with, with Kevin, but also had a chance to meet him one on one. And he was saying to me that perfumery started in Italy years and years ago. So. Um, Catarina de Medici, yada yada. She brought that knowledge and, and uh, that stuff. What well, modern day perfume? Because really, if you go back, it actually started in the, the Arab nations and around the Middle East. Anyway, but in modern day, um, Italian. Then it went to France, and then France really elaborated on that when it comes to things like grass and things like that. But he's saying that perfumery is actually going back to the Middle East, and he's actually based in Dubai. He says exciting things are happening within that region when it comes to perfumery. So again, watch this space. If you want something exciting, new, developed, uh, um, you know, when it comes to perfumery, check out the Suspiro range. Have a look at Salas. This is a ultra bougie new lineup that's coming through. That's pretty exciting. Anyway, I'll be doing more talking about that. Whew. Man. Thanks everybody. I hope that wasn't too crazy. Um, and I hope that that was somewhat enjoyable. I look forward to your comments. I know there are some people who are across 
both the, the Suspiro. I'd be curious to see. I didn't see. I haven't seen a lot with Salas. It is a new brand that's come out, um, but I'd be curious to see anyone's thoughts on that. Uh, and uh, thanks, everyone. We'll, I look forward to your comments, and we'll see you all on the next Monday talk. Cool.